Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that wasn't my fault. It's all good. Hey guys, this episode of Wednesdays with Will and Terry is brought to you by our sponsors over at the Seed Box. What is the Seed Box? It's pocket size affirmation car set crafted to serve as a deeply rooted expression of self love or a unique gift of encouragement to those you truly and deeply care about. So you can sow, ingrain, act, and develop. Guys, the seed box is awful. Simply what it is, is it's a box set with cards inside to give you motivation, to inspire you, to be your best self. One of the cards reads, you are the epitome of beauty. Your outside radiance is a reflection of your glorious essence. You are one of the most wonderful creations. You are a living, breathing, and walking masterpiece. I am beautiful. Guys, I think this would make a great gift for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, and birthday. Just a great gift overall, guys. Please show them some love and show them some support for being our sponsors over at Wednesdays with Will & Terry. And we have a little treat for you guys. If you go to thecbox.com, that's T-H-E-S-E-A-D-B-O-X dot C-O-M, and use the promotion code WEDNESDAYS, you will get a discount on your first order. So guys, they have showed us some love. They're awesome. We believe in what the company is doing. We believe in their affirmations. I think that this will make a great gift. Now back to the show, guys. Damn. Killed that mug. That was say, solid, should I, bro. Should I do it again? Or that's that's the nah, one? That was solid. I don't think oh. you can get better than that. Yeah. I was I just right here cheesing. To you. <laughs> that shit had me cheesing. I was like, <laughs> smoking through this mug. All right. <laughs> now you'll see I, how far it is. Yeah, no, I I hate that stuff, dude. I always overthink it. But you're charismatic, so it's going to be easy for you. Last week was my topic. This week, you about to hit him in the head with this one. So what's the topic for you this week? What are we, what are we talking about? Motivation. Motivation, man. Some days I feel like I'm motivated and I'm ready to just get after it. Right when I wake up, I, you know, get my teeth fresh, shower, um, get my coffee, I'm out of here. And then some days I'm in bed just contemplating my schedule and thinking and thinking and thinking and I haven't moved yet and I don't know what that's from maybe it's tiredness or maybe it's just uh I don't know uh I'm getting overwhelmed at times or whatever but uh I feel like sometimes I'm motivated and sometimes I actually have to like look for motivation just to get my day started that's you know yeah yeah so is that something that you deal with? You or are you like just relatively a motivated person, or do sometimes you have to search for it? I think we all have to search for motivation, but I believe that uh depends on what it is, you know. If it's something that I have no passion or no drive in, I really don't care. <laughs> but if it's something that you know I have to have to do, or you know, it's something that's a passion or a goal of mine, then a lot of the times I'm not motivated. You know, I do have to look for motivation or I may have to, like, remind myself, you know, like, why I'm doing that thing or, or you know, give myself a little pep talk to get myself into it. But, with, you know, with that being said, if you're talking about motivation, I guess what I will do is uh, give the people the definition of motivation. I mean, that way they at least know what motivation is. I'm sure everybody knows what motivation is, but rarely do we look to a dictionary. So it says motivation, the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a, tic- in a particular way. Uh, then the second definition is similar definition, the general desire or willingness of someone to do something. So I don't know what we take from that, but since we're talking about motivation, I guess now. Oh, we're goes. And- Plain, bro. It's, it's crazy because we use these terms so lightly, like uh motivation is i mean it's key to moving forward definitely and i mean it really makes it really matters because i mean you could just go to work and get job get your job done but are you really getting progress you know what i mean 
mm-hmm. like it i mean you kind of just feel like some sometimes i'm like i get in the mode of working and then after the week passed by if i really look back and assess like what i got done to move to to like progress wise it's not all the time that I made progress that week, man. Sometimes it's just like I go to work, I get the, I put my hours in, I come home, I put my time in with the kids and we communicate things and all that. But it's like the next week starts, the next week it starts off just like last Monday did. And if that's not the case, that's just how I feel sometimes. And mm-hmm. So, but when I'm mode, when I'm when I'm in a when I have a motivated mind frame. I do, I take little extra steps, you know? And I feel, I see it in people too. Like when they're, when they feel motivated, they feel like they can accomplish a little bit more. And that's where the real progress comes into play. I feel like you, you, you have your responsibilities and your wants and needs and you keep them like that. But when days when you're motivated, you just have the, it feels like you're capable. Not saying that it always happens, but you feel like, capable to raise the bar a little bit and then because of that you bring every you bring the things around you up too because people you know people and situations react to the motivation you know like I guess that's how I would explain why I seek motivation so much and why it's such a problem when I'm moving and I'm not motivated to me I feel like Okay, even if I'm even if I'm up doing stuff, I don't feel motivated. I kind of feel like I'm wasting my time right there, or I'm just like I'm passing an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, do you believe it makes sense to like sometimes if you're just going and going and you don't feel like you're getting, you're like kind of just doing things and you're not really interested in it or focused. It's good to like like back up a little bit and then like try to try to find some motivation wherever you're doing and then get back to it that way you can like cease the full the full opportunities there like you know yeah i mean (laughs) yes but i believe you have to have an end result like you have to have a goal because i mean to be motivated to do something, there has to be something you're trying to attain. There got to be something you're trying to reach. There has to be an end result. So I feel like a lot of the times what motivates you is the end result. And I feel like that's what motivation is within itself. It's like, I have to draw this picture. It's in my head. This client is paid for it. This picture has to be drawn. I don't feel like drawing today. You know, my fingers hurt. This isn't coming out the way I want you know, this, I just can't get this eye or can't get this tattoo correct. This guy wants this tattoo, but you know, the end result is you want the money, you know, you may even want to want to see the end result of the tattoo being finished. So the motivation can come from a couple of places. And, you know, I think what a lot of people, what motivates a lot of people, I believe is the end result, but then there's two different types of motivation. You have what's called intrinsic motivation. And then I believe the other one is called extrinsic motivation. So extrinsic will be like, mm-hmm. you do something motivated, motivated by a reward. So like our jobs, we don't go to work because we love to go to work. We go to work because we want to get paid. The reward is to be paid. Or you might put in some OT Or you might ask the manager, is there anything that you need me to do? You know, I want to pick up some more responsibilities because I want the the promotion is down the line. So, you know, eccentric motivation is when I'm doing something because I'm seeking a reward. You know, they have studies where like they'll to tell people like, hey, can you group of people try and answer this math question or put this puzzle together? And let's see who does it the fastest. And then they'll go to another group and say, hey, you guys answer this question in same question, different group of people. But you guys try to answer this question. Let's see who does it the fastest. And the person that does it the fastest gets three hundred dollars. You know, one is doing it because they have a goal. The other one is just simply doing it just to do it. But then you have what's called intrinsic motivation. And that's simply 
something you're motivated to do because it's something you love. Like we're skateboarders. We skateboard, we play guitar because it's a love. So I feel like you have, you pull from different places depending on which motivation you're using. So for me, when I'm skateboarding intrinsic motivation, it's just me versus me. I just want to get that trick. I'm trying to learn a new trick. I'm trying to get this line down. I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to beat myself. You know, it's, it's a fulfilling reward. It's a desire that it's just me versus me. I don't care about being paid. There is no promotion at the end of it. It's just something that I love to do. I pull from that enjoyment. The enjoyment of doing it is my motivation. The fact that if I learn this trick, I can move on and learn another one is my motivation. Whereas I get up and go to work for 80 hours a week because I love my wife. I love my children. I want to be able to provide for them. I want to be able to help. You know, I want to be able to pay this rent and, and help my wife with the things that she needs and to do things for myself. So my motivation for that is this is what I have to do because I got to take care of this responsibility. Whereas my hobbies, my in intrinsic motivation is this is what I want to do for me. You know, yeah. I feel like those who are blessed, I would consider like Kanye West, you know, and maybe you there, this doesn't exist. I made this up in my mind. I think the best type of motivation or the best type of life to live when you're motivated is when you can mix something intrinsic with something extrinsic. So for example, Kanye West is a musical artist. He loves music. He's mm -hmm. a fashion guy. He loves fashion, right? He would probably make music and clothes for free if he could because it's what he loves. Yeah. But he turned it into a business. So now that he's doing something he loves and he gets to get paid for it, I don't think when you're in those kind of places, you don't really have to find a motivation because, you know, I'm doing what I love and it's a business. So for him, just waking up probably is motivation enough. Yeah. I mean, Man, that's a beautiful thing, man. I I mean, I hear them complain that there's like, it's a little bit more involved, but I mean, you're not gonna, you have to work. It's all, you gotta make sacrifices. So, but to, to wake up and know that, and to, to wake up and have an idea to do a hobby that you like and know that you're gonna get paid like good money for it to take care of your family, that's most definitely a plus, man. And then uh, I think that just motivates you in itself right there. Like, for me, I guess, it's just the fact that, like, I'm chasing that situation. But, I mean, I, I'm in a situation where I have to work a place where I don't want to work. And I have to do things throughout the day, throughout my weeks, that I don't necessarily feel like I... Like it's me, like I wouldn't do it unless I had to. And it's more of that than what I want. And sometimes I get so busy with responsibilities that I have to actually, I'm, I'm forced to cheat. I'm forced to like snip in a little bit of time out of my schedule to go to the skate park or show up to a spot or to get some, some I got designs I got to do for people and things like that, which is fun for the art, <clears throat> but it's the same thing like I have to draw and design what they want but I can't I don't really have the freedom of doing what I want unless they're actually intrigued by my style and they're like I which I do get I do get offers where they're like do what you do because I like your stuff which is dope but more times than not I have to like do what I have to work against migraine you know and so in order to keep level headed throughout those processes, I have to have memories in my head of me doing what I want to do and enjoying time for myself and the things that I like. So if I don't get a chance to do it, I cut little snippets of time out to like draw a couple of things, you know, that's something that you deal with too, where you get like kind of overwhelmed and you have to pull little times out for yourself or do you, are you good at like, managing time management i think we all start off a little rocky you know if you don't have a 
I think I want to say consistency. I think if you're not consistent, then you won't remain motivated. I think one of the things that really kills motivation is procrastination. You know, I yeah. feel like for a lot of people, I got five more minutes. I could do it tomorrow. You know, I'll work out the day after. My kid needs me to do this and do that. And I know we always say it's not enough time in the day, but realistically there is because there's that time when you're on your cell phone just squirreling through, squirreling. I can't say that word, guys. I know y'all going to make fun of <laughs> When you're squirreling through yeah. or, you know, <laughs> there's the time where you're watching that TV show and it's the same episode you've seen five or six times. And I think what it really is, is as humans, we become complacent, we become comfortable. And I think comfortability and complacency is the enemy to motivation. You know, I think being consistent, I think being accountable, and I think, like I said, having an end result or a goal, you know, maybe have it written on your wall or have it an alarm in your phone, something or somebody that will keep you accountable to be motivated. And then honestly, sometimes I feel like motivation isn't enough. I feel like you have to just want that thing because there's plenty of times where I did not want to work out and I was not motivated, but I just, I have a physique that I'm trying to get to. You know, I tell people all the yeah. time, I want to be, and that's no, this is no hit on any, I know I'm not trying to like down anybody when I say this, but I don't want to be 50 and 60 and can't stand up straight or, you know, I'm in a wheelchair and my wife has to push me around or my kids have to take care of me and I'm dependent on them. You know, I want to be, when I'm at those golden years in my life, I want to be able to be uh, self-sufficient. You know, I want to be able to dance with my wife. And my, my daughters have children. I want to be able to run around with my grandkids and take them to Disneyland and not, and I want to go on cruises and I want to do all of these things. And there are times where, you know, you could consider that motivation, but there's times where, you know, I'm tired. You know, I worked eight hours, then I have to commute home and I get here and I just want to lay down. You know, I have to force myself, even knowing like I don't want to look this way when I get older. I don't want to be dependent on my family. I want to be able, if I can help it, you know, God willing, we don't know what the future holds, but if I can help it, you know, I want to have a certain shape. So I just force myself to do it. You know, it's, it's the consistency. Mm -hmm. I, it's like skateboarding you know nobody had to tell me to keep practicing my kickflips until it got good until I got good at them I just I knew within myself like I can do a kickflip and you always hear kids that are like oh I learned how to kickflip and then they land this little mob flip and they on their <laughs> tippy toes and they bounce off and it's like well you learned the concept but you still can't kickflip I'm one of those people where if I can do something I should be able to do it you know if I say I can front side flip and you say, well, go do a front side flip. Nine times out of 10, I'm going to land that front side flip because I've consistently done it. You know, that was motivation there to be able to do something consistently. And there were times where I didn't want to do a front side flip. I wasn't motivated. You know, I wanted to move on to a hill flip or a tray flip or something else because the front side flip wasn't working. But, you know, a lot of people don't know Bucky Elastic said when he learns a trick, he just goes for that trick and he does not stop. He doesn't do anything else. It's that trick and that trick only until he lands that trick. And I'm yeah. sure there's times where he just is like, I don't want to do a kickflip McTwist or whatever vert trick he was trying, you know, I'm tired of falling, my knees are racked up, I'm tired, I'm tired of dropping in, I can't figure it out. But then when you finally get that trick, you know, you finally land it or then he finally masters it. You know, I think a lot of people, too, speaking of motivation, people just see the end results of whatever your goal is. Because when I look at motivation, the key word is motive. Motive to me is like, what are your motives? What are your reasons? Why are you doing something? You know, people just see the, the artist in Terry. People just see the guitar player of William. People just see, you know, oh, he's a deacon or, oh, you know, he's married or Oh, Terry's an amazing artist. He, oh, Terry gets the hype, but people don't really know what it took for us to get here. You know, we had to be motivated and go through things that we had to go through to get where we are, you know? Yeah. 
you you a lot of times people look at the rock and they just see the end result or oh, the rocks this big buff guy he's in shape i want to be like that but you don't see the consistency of this man probably eats the same breakfast every morning he gets up at the same time you know he's a no nonsense no excuse kind of guy if you follow his social media like he gets the job done so if this man is doing movies press conferences flying around the world uh, doing shows and then he still finds time to be motivated to work out and to do all of these other things I'm sure there's times where he's just like I don't want to get in that gym today but you know the my motive you know I, I have to keep up this physique you know I'm the rock this is why they hire me in movies this is why I do what I do so a lot of times when people talk about motivation really what I think you're saying is what's the reason why you do what you do you know and, and when you feel like that reason is gone or like say for example you work hard because you love your wife and your family but then you get a divorce then why continue to work hard then you have to readjust well i don't have my wife and we're divorced and my kids live with her i see them every other weekend now why am i doing what i'm doing you know am i doing this for me or you know what's my motivation now you know do i quit this job do i go pursue the things that i want in life you know so Factors can change motivation as well. Yeah. I mean, so for, I mean, there's got to be a balance uh, what I'm recognizing because like, I, I, I like to listen to podcasts and watch interviews and things like that. And uh, one of the things I've been noticing a lot is that like these highly successful people like uh, Kevin Hart, for instance, is one of them. Even in his podcast, like every single guest that he has on there, gives him a little bit about how he works way too much and his motivation is he doesn't want to go back to what he came from you know like he came from a hard place and he wants things to be better for his family and his kids but at the same time I hear little things like oh you don't return my phone calls from his guests from his friends you don't refer we're doing from our real one you don't return my phone call or I haven't spoke to you in a long time or you're always too busy or you're not going to show up because you don't have any time on your schedule and this and that. And I'm pretty sure behind the curtains, that kind of pits a really big wrench in his personal life. You know, like the fact that he has so much time ties. And I heard one with, on Joe Rogan too, where he said that he gets depressed. He was actually interviewing Earthquake, the comedian, which godfather of comedy man since i was little that dude used to have me rolling but uh he uh he was interviewing earthquake and he was telling earthquake was talking about how he makes sure he takes time out to like enjoy himself and watching tv and things like that and joe rogan said like with all his success and the things all his responsibilities like he can't even watch tv for five minutes he said he feels guilty and he he said he can't do like play video games. He won't play video games, even though he loves like online video games. He can't do it because it takes too much time off of his responsibilities. He can't sleep full. I've heard in many multiple people, they can't sleep well. They can only, they're lucky if they get six hours of sleep a night, right? And then uh, naps are just completely out of the picture. And then like, you see a lot of relationship turmoil and things like that, but for some reason, they still find motivation to move past all that. At the same time, I try to find motivation. I feel like where I would get told as bad to make those little snippets out of my time and have me time and enjoy the things in the time, I take some time out of life for myself. I will get shamed for that. But I feel like that shame would only come from people who feel some type of uh dependence on my work you know on my hustle like if if it's my kids or say if I was in a relationship at the time a girlfriend or or marriage or anything or at work I get complaints from people who depend on my hand in it but like friends and stuff like that that have their own things going they kind of like complain to me like you need some you time because you're a mess bro every time I talk to you you're busy 
every time I ask you if you have time to do something, you don't, you know? And so like that plays a big factor in, and my, during my process of getting motivated too, is like, I get these like second side, these other sided thoughts where it's like, okay, get this done. But at the same time, I have other things that I have responsibility to that might not make me any money or might not keep a roof over my head and things like that, or keep the maintenance up on my vehicle or whatever. But I still need to get those things, give those things some of my time too. So when I'm looking for motivation, uh, if I feel like I can't find it as easy as usual, then I feel like it's a sign that I need to like take some time off for myself because it stems more from an emotional perspective than like me just being lazy or like avoiding responsibilities, like being a uh, discipline. It's more of me just being, Oh, I haven't been home for a while, you know, like, when people get dispatched to the service and stuff, when they come home, there's a part of them that wants to spend so much time with everybody, but then there's also a part of them that wants to just be home and go to the beach and just sit there for a while mm-hmm. or go to the skate park and do the things. We had a friend that used to come home from his terms and then he would he would come back for like a couple months and he didn't care about nothing. He's just like, bro, we need to find skate spots. And I remember particularly when we went to like Fairfax High you know, a famous ledge spot, Sarah's stuff, but um, those ledges are massive, by the way. Yo, they made them look really you. easy. Yeah. <laughs> they made them look really easy yeah. on footy, but I'm when curious. you show up to that spot, I'm like, how did they nolly and switch into these mugs, man? It's retarded, but uh, I remember it rained that day, and he came home. I can't remember his name, and I'm not going to disrespect him by giving the wrong one, but uh, really really respectable guy and he was a very good skater before he got before he went to the service but um it rained that day and his whole demeanor changed he just turned he was just like this in the back seat and he was like man and we realized we remember it that uh nugs was with us and he remembered that there was like a pavilion over the lunch area and so he's like bro let's get some lunch benches let's take it back to like the day one versus rodney mullen days you know and he was so hyped. Like, we went over there and skated a little bit. And then after we skated for maybe, like, maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and then he was like, all right, well, hey, I got to head out, bro. I got other things to do. So he wrapped us up real quick. Like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's get going. And then he was hyped, and he was down to go to his dinner and all that stuff that he had to do with his family, but he just needed that him time. Mm -hmm. And I was inspired by that because – too many times I've told the people that really matter in my life, like I can't, but sometimes you gotta just like, you just gotta take it. You just gotta do it, man. Because if not <laughs> later on, it might, if you, you keep motivating yourself to do things that you're supposed to do, it's really hard. It conflicts with your motivation to do things that you want to do later. You know, you could rewire your brain to think to being like this, just this like service animal. And you don't know how to have fun anymore. And I've met people like that plenty of times. Even to this day, I meet people like that. They lose they they lose their sense of humor and everything has to be explained to them in detail and everything's numbers game and they and you have to tell them specifics and it's like, bro, like sand some of your edges down a little bit, bro. Like be a human being. Don't just be a ro- don't you're becoming a a, a like you're becoming a drone, like a, a robot, dude. You know, it's funny. I'm going to agree with what you said earlier and then touch on what you said now. I definitely believe that you have to have balance. You know, again, when it comes to extrinsic and intrinsic or just doing something for a reward or doing something because you love it, you have to balance it. And I think what a lot of people, a lot of people that are workaholics, you know, and they say they don't have any time to themselves when they get to the end of their life and, you know, or they get to a point where they feel like I'm at the mountaintop and then they look back and it's like the kids are grown, you're older, maybe, you know, your wife and you were, all of this time has passed. And then you always hear those people say, you know, I wish I had more time. You know, I wish I could have been there. I wish I would have been, went to my daughter. I, I miss my daughter's recital. I miss my son's baseball game. Or I miss my son's recital. And I miss my daughter's softball game. 
And then when you have those people who are just flowing through life and just enjoying the beauty of the beach or whatever it is they love to do. And, you know, you have those who are around who's like, hey, man, you need to get more serious. You know, you in your 30s and you haven't you don't even have a career yet. You can't wander forever. You know, aren't you going to want a family? You no, know, aren't you going to want those finer things in life? How are you going to take care of yourself? I mean, we know people on both ends where it's like. I'm not going to use that as an example, but I'll say I will, because I'm always going to try to make the. I'm going to try to open the door for honesty every podcast. There's people that I see at the skate park that I have been seeing at the skate park for years and there's no change. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm being honest. I mean, yeah. they haven't learned any new tricks. They don't dress different. They don't talk different. They smoke the same thing. They drink the same beer. You know, it's like, you are getting older. And I know this to be true because I'm getting older. And, you know, the skate park is fun. You know, you want to get high, you want to get drunk, and maybe you just up there to be up there. You might not be doing any of those things, but life is this big, beautiful thing that we've been blessed with, and you letting it pass you by, and all you know is uh, Somerset and Village. You know, it's like there's so much more out there, you know. You got to take life serious. You got to, you might want to look into like, how am I going to take care of myself, my future? You know, I need to get a job. You know, you get a job, you can buy a better beer. You can buy a better brand of weed. You know what I'm saying? You might meet somebody and you want to go and get an apartment together or something. And then you have those that we know that's like, they all about the money. You know, every time you see them, they, oh man, I got picking up hours or I'm doing this or I'm working and I'm doing this. And, you know, we don't know what life is thrown at them, the responsibilities they have, but, you know, they can't even sit down and enjoy a burger, you know, because the phone rings and, hey, man, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. And it's sad because you're like, man, you are replaceable. I don't care who you work for unless you own that business. I don't care what company or what title you hold or have. You are replaceable. We have to really accept that as human beings. We're replaceable. The only people we're not replaceable to is family. But let's be honest, if I was to die right now, I would want my wife to get remarried. I don't think it's fair for her to live the rest of her life just mourning mourning me. You know, she still has a lot of life ahead of her. If I was to get fired at my job, they hire somebody else, give them my badge, give them my stripes, and they'd be on the job. So you have to balance, you know, what do I do for myself? And what do I do for to gain something to help those around me? You know, two different types of motivations. You got to balance them. And then going back to what you said about those people that are around Kevin Hart, those people that are around Joe Rogan, those people that are around you. In me, I don't get mad at people for not understanding, you know, when people are, oh, you don't have time or this or that, because I don't expect people to understand what it is that I'm trying to achieve, you know. People don't understand the goals that I have for me. People want what's best for me, but nobody wants what's better for me than I do, you know? And then people will want what's best for you in their eyes, and people will want what's best for you so that they can benefit from it. At the end of the day, you know, I know what's, well, God knows, but I believe I know what's best for me, or I know what I'm trying to accomplish, or I know what dream I'm trying to fulfill you know if i said hey i want to be a, the next evil knievel a lot of people will tell me hey man that's dangerous are you sure you want to do that that guy suffered broken bones and he went through all of this and he did all of these dangerous stunts you know i want to be the next jackie chan oh you want to make those movies but that guy fractured his skull and he was messed up limbs and all of this other stuff but look at the legacy that's left behind it. you know when they went into it they just went into it they had an end result, they had an end goal. And I'm not upset because people don't understand, you know, that I have to do this and that's gonna take away from you. And then lastly, one of the things you said that I've learned in my 35 years of life is one of the most powerful words that you can say to somebody is no. One of the most powerful words you can say to somebody is I can't, not even I can't. That's the part. going to or I don't want to, because what I've learned is normally those who are asking 
are those who are using. And those who are using generally don't have anything or if they do have it, they don't want to give you anything in return. You know, they, can't, they don't have the time, the energy, the finance. And if they do, you know, they saving it up and giving it out to somebody else. There's times where I literally have to be like, hey, I can't work those extra hours. Hey, you know, no, I don't want to go to that part today. I want to go to this yeah. part. Or no, I don't like that. Or no, I'm not going to accept this meal. This isn't what I ordered. And, you know, society has taught us, especially being men and being men of color, black men, Puerto Rican men, you know, whatever we call it ourselves. It's like we have to walk around with our tails tucked or we have to walk around being docile. And if we stand up and say, you know, it doesn't have to be mean, just, no, I, I can't, I'm not doing that. No, I don't want that. Then we're seen as mean or we're seen as degrading, you know, Dave Chappelle, and then I'll let you go. I watched an interview with Dave Chappelle and he was talking about uh, when he did the movie Blue Streak with Martin, how the director came in and how the scene was already shot, how they had already done the scene. And the director comes in, it's like, oh my God, Dave, I have such a great, uh, uh, scene for you we're going to switch it up a little bit so when martin's going to get you out of jail you're going to come out and you're going to be in a dress and dave is like wait man i'm not wearing no dress you know he's like come on dave man it's going to be a great scene it's going to kill it the audience remember you forever he's like man i'm funnier than that you know i don't I, i'm not going to wear a dress i don't want to do that and the director got mad if somebody go talk to him you know get him come on man make him do it so he's, everybody's going to talk to him and dave is like look guys i made up my mind I'm not wearing a dress. And, you know, people would think, well, he wants to be in a movie because motiv he's motivated to be an actor. This is when Dave Chappelle is on his rise. He wants to be in a movie. The motivation is, hey, you want to be in a movie? You want to make your money? Wear this dress. You know, but he had an end goal. He had an end result. He had maybe a list of things that he already set up, his do's and don'ts, his reasons for why he does it and he does. And I feel like a lot of the times, you know, we're motivated to do something, but we let a naysayer or we let somebody come up and says, hey, man, you can't tattoo your tattoos are ugly. This guy I know does really good tattoos. And now that you got that plan in your brain or, hey, man, you know, you suck as a deacon, man. Your prayers don't never reach God, you know. And now I'm sitting in the back and I'm not praying because there's just those people who are out there like that. And you have to be locked in and you have to know, like, I might suck today, or maybe he might think his, my tattoos do suck. Somebody might listen to this podcast and say, man, these guys suck. You know, but this, what is our end goal? Why are we motivated to be podcasters? Why did we start doing these podcasts? You know, we always talk about opening the door for honesty. He might just be telling the truth. Maybe we do suck. But does that stop us from achieving the goal? You know, if there is no goal, yeah motivations out the window i feel like like people need to calm down with that because the expectations like nowadays is people just expect you to be good at something like right off the bat but that's also goes into play that people also ex expect to be good at something that they just started to and it's like yeah that's where the sensitivity comes in because it's like dude you think, oh, I hear so many people like, bro, I'm starting a YouTube channel, tune in and this and that. And I go on there and look and some people have a good start where they like, most of the time, if you're just starting and you do a good one, it's probably because you follow the steps of someone that you like, you know, you have mm -hmm. a template, you made a template, you know, just like this YouTube channel that you watch. And then you do the same exact thing and then you're satisfied because it looks like something that's already been in play. But to be honest, you haven't done anything but monkey see, see monkey do. You haven't started your own podcast. You started or your own YouTube channel. You started a YouTube channel like this person's. Yes. You know, it's not yours. And so like for for good example, our first episode, I was a wreck. I was like, in my head, I was already just thinking like people were gonna hate on it right off the back. Like, especially our friends. Man, we used to get burned for the worst, like the littlest crap. So I was like, I'm gonna have text messages. I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of comments on my posts, but I knew this one. 
if somebody has something negative to say, they're going to do it, right? But the thing that I wanted more, I wanted to do the podcast more than I gave a crap about what people thought about it right off the bat. I figured I won't pay attention to what people think about it as much until it becomes a thing, until I am a podcaster, right? And that takes work. It takes time. I've never done a podcast before, never even went to been invited to a podcast session. I didn't know how to film it, how to edit or anything, but I'm a fan of it. I watch it and then I watch some YouTube videos and we I did like a little bit of research and I was just like, man, this is something that seems like when you wing it and just throw it out there, not only do you get, even if the results are bad at the beginning, you know where you stand after that, you know? And the truth is the true version of what you are, where you're at. And so then you get to like tinker in the right places, you mm-hmm. know? But if you pretend you're, if you try to bite off of someone else's platform, and you're doing it that exact same way, eventually you're going to get comfortable and want to do it your way. And you're going to have to start from that moment of learning how to do podcasts, right? But yeah. we just, we were like, just put it out. <laughs> just put it out and then follow the feed. You know, the critics, the, the, the critics know what they want and they'll tell us over time. And all we have to do is just comply. But to assume we know what the critics want, to assume that we we have exactly what they need, is just ridiculous, and, and it's a setup for failure. I feel that like assumption is just an enemy in most in most cases, you know. All right, so I noticed here in your uh, questions that you sent me, one of the questions you asked is, "Are you usually the motivator, or do you find?" motivation by those who accompany you. I guess I will switch that up a little bit. Coming from the place of being a motivator, how do you motivate people? Like what is your antic for motivating like a friend or motivating your children? What forms of motivation do you use? I have a a hard time with motivating people because the, the techniques that I use are pretty aggressive. Because I realized early on in my life that I have to be that way with myself. It's just what I respond to better. I'm like, get your lazy ass up, bro. Like, let's go. Let's get going. We got stuff to do. You know what I mean? Like, stop waiting there. And then I sometimes I have to, like, talk myself out of my head because I'll go through my schedule. I don't, I'm nowadays, I write things down. But for a large portion of my life, I just, like, remember set lists in my head but the hard part about that is I'm creative so like I can't do it like correct in numbers I have I'll do this and then if I'm in this area I'll get these two done and then I'll go back and then I'll be like well what else was I supposed to do today ah crap you know so I ended up in the end I was forced to start writing things down as a, a way as opposed to how I used to do things but um in that time, I guess I developed this like really firm subconscious, like this really aggressive subconscious because that's what got me through a lot of things. It's just like to don't give myself a chance to get, to go down that rabbit hole of why or how long, or like expectate or building expectations of the situation. It's almost just like, just go for it. You know, I, we, I mean, naturally because we're skaters, I want to just bring up another analogy of like, when you first started progressing on the amount of stairs you could ollie off of, right? You could, I wouldn't even call doing tricks off of right away because that took me a while, but at least I ollie 180. When you, <clears throat> well, for me, I noticed I couldn't, I would look at the stairs just so I knew what I was dealing with, but then I wouldn't sit there and think about it. I wouldn't do anything. I would give it a look, judge how fast I got to go, skate back real fast before I get in my head and then haul ass even faster to the stairs and pop before I got in my head so I use that same technique when I use those same tactics when I'm trying to get things done in my day too I just kind of go for things if I don't move like that then I'll 
depress myself. Like I talk really hard to myself, really down. And then uh, if I, but it's because I know what I'm capable of. It's like, bro, are you slipping? Let's get this done. And so when I'm helping other people, I tend to do that unconsciously. And I'll just be like, let's go. Get it done, bro. Let's go. Now I found something that works because there's plenty of ways, but that's my way. And so whenever I'm help, when, when people ask me for help, I've learned to like, to give them an introduction <laughs> to like, be like, bro, I'm, I'm pretty rough, dude, because I'm a lazy ass. You know, all my friends, this ain't how I look when you guys see me before at all. I was like three of these mugs. Like that with dreads. And I remember one time Tank told me, he was like, hey, when you walk, bro, your posture is so bad, you look sad. Like you walk. <laughs> I was just like walking like. <laughs> and, uh, but that's what changed me. To get out of that. To, to, to don't give myself a chance to procrastinate. No space for procrastination. Which means, because I'm good, I, I can, I'm good at excuses. <laughs> And I'm good at like explaining things of like ways to get through things. So I can easily like come up with a way to manipulate myself out of like getting this done now. I could find, and I'll be like, I can make this sacrifice, that sacrifice. So I'll do two hours now and two hours a couple of days later. And I, I offer that same advice to people to stay away from that when I'm helping. But sometimes in the action of things, I get aggressive and I can yell. I could, uh, I could, I could say things I could say, call people names, stop being lazy, or uh, you're not even thinking right now, you're being dumb. And so I try to just like, I just try not to help people like there with them, but more so give advice in the forefront and then stand on the sidelines if they call me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> what about you? Do you, are you good at, uh, how do you motivate people? definitely think I'm a better motivator than I am at staying motivated. When I watch like Matthew McConaughey speak at a college or I watch like Denzel stand before a bunch of people and speak, I can see myself doing that because I think I'm very personable. And one thing that people always tell me is like, you're so honest and trustworthy. I know that sounds very arrogant to say, but I said in humble truthfulness. And I think, you know, one of my tactics is to get to know the person. I think it'd be harder for me to motivate just a stranger per, per se. But even like, you know, there's times I'm at Guitar Center and somebody's playing the song and, you know, I hear them mess up or whatever. Something as simple as, you know, taking back Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, man, I just can't figure out the chord. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you got it. You know, it's just, it's a D minor. It's like, okay but I'm like yeah just put your fingers right here and you got it man keep it going you know and I but with that being said I think it depends on the person because I believe there's more than you know that's a phrase I don't know why we said it's more than one way to skin a cat I think it's, yeah. it's more than one way to be a motivator and I think there are good ways to motivate in bad ways so mm -hmm. I watch movies and I read a lot of books about crazy stuff so like you read books about people who have been captured or people who are like POWs and they're motivated to stay alive, you know, or they're motivated to do something they don't necessarily want to do by the fear of dying. So it's like, I'll kill you or I'll hurt your family. Or you see movies a lot of times where men take these women and they want to break up. Now, if you ever leave me, I'll go get your family or vice versa. If you leave me, I'll come and find you and I'll take your kids, right? And that's a motivator to maybe stay in something that you don't want to stay in or to do something that you don't want to do. It's the fear of harm, the fear of death, the fear of something happening to the people you love. So you're motivated to do all these things you probably don't want to do simply to protect those around you. And then you have like weightlifters, right? I love weightlifters as motivators because they push you to go further than what you know you could go, you know? So it's like, you are always doing 10 reps and then you have these guys who see something that you don't see. They see that, no, you just giving up. They see that you got three more in you. And you got these guys in your ears, push it. Let's go. Get it up. Go. You got this. This is nothing. We see, keep waiting. That, Let's that's go. me. You know? <laughs> and, but it works because 
they're doing that to a weightlifter. You're not going to talk like that to a five-year-old who can't get one plus one. Let's go. No one plus one. Because the five-year-old is like, oh, wait, wait. You know, you have to be able to approach people where they are as it comes to motivation. And I think that's what I'm really good at doing is like, weeding people out and understanding where that person is and what type of motivation they need depending on what they're doing so yeah. like for myself one of my biggest motivators is my faith one of my biggest motivators is god one of my biggest motivators is jesus i find a lot of motivation in scripture i find a lot of motivation in prayer i find a lot of motivation in my, in my savior and my god right yeah. to an atheist that will work because they don't believe in what I believe in. They don't believe in anything. Or somebody who believes in Buddha ain't really trying to hear what I got to say about Jesus. So how would I find a way to motivate them? I don't know anything about Buddha. So I would have to see where that person is coming from or to see, you know, their get down. And you and I think I'm pretty good at it. You know, you give me a couple of seconds to look at somebody or talk to somebody and I can kind of weed out who that person is. You know, I work a lot of the time. You know, we work in a hectic environment. Some people will be mad or somebody will say something and simply, hey, man, you're doing a great job. And that takes people a long way. That's motivation to get you through four more hours of this treachery. You know, it's one of those things. It's like when you say you give good advice, if only you could take it. You know, a lot of when it comes to motivation, I think I'm a lot better at putting it together and present it to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's swallowing that pill myself. You know, we all procrastinate. We're all lazy and we're all hard on ourselves. And sometimes it's okay to be hard on yourself. Sometimes you need to be. Sometimes you need that slap in the face. Sometimes you need that wake up call. Sometimes you need to stumble to see that you're not perfect. You know, that mm -hmm. you can still fall off a bike. You still can't jump rope for 20 minutes straight. You still miss a flip trick every once in a while. You're not the best looking. You ain't the finest. You're not the smartest. You're not the richest. And a lot of the times, I think arrogance gets in the way of motivation. I think pride gets in the way of motivation. And I think when you are trying to reach that goal, when you're trying to accomplish whatever it is, whatever you need to do to be motivated, I think you have to stay humble. I mean, when you somebody like Floyd Mayweather, of course, you know, 50 fights, you know, but then you ask, I'd rather get in the ring with Mayweather than Mike Tyson, but look at how humble Mike Tyson is. That's his, and, and no offense, Mayweather's earned the right to be arrogant, but yeah. I would re much rather fight an arrogant Mayweather than a humble Mike Tyson, simply because he has to believe that, you know, that's his end result. That's his goal. His motivation is to not lose, to be 50 and oh, Mike Tyson's motivation was to become a legend. You know what I mean? Honestly, yeah. He, when he died, he wanted to be remembered. He wanted to be immortalized. But, you know, two different motivations, two of the same introspects, you know, both boxers. How do you motivate Mayweather? Hey, man, you'll never lose. You're the greatest. Nobody can touch you. Everything Ram is yours. Ramsey you is Mike number one. Yeah, you number know, how do you motivate Mike Tyson now? You know, yeah. hey, you know, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your meekness. Thank you for your humbleness. Like you watch interviews now and he says like, these belts are nothing to me. They're worthless. And he's, yeah. you know what I mean? He's like, I'm happy to just have life. I love myself. I love my family. You know, so. I think to an, uh, to, uh, to, <clears throat> I think to an extent that like, uh, that Mayweather is just like that because he has to be right now, you know? Because yeah. if you me. think about yeah. it, if you think about it, he hasn't, he's building his empire. He hasn't lived in it yet. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like Tyson moved in to his empire and he realized like he's done. You know what I mean? Like, so now he can relax. Now he, now he can calm down and he can pay attention to things. <laughs> now he can like pay attention to things that he, he has the by the way, Mr. Tyson. If you happen to watch this episode, that was Terry doing that. It wasn't me. Uh, he's <laughs> I don't want no problems, bro. I watch his I watch his hot box or whatever. He's he's stupid cool. I would love to go. Yeah, I know. But that man but still hey, got the heck of a, a uppercut. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That is all respect, bro. I wouldn't even just walk on the same side of the street as Mike Tyson. That's my motivation right there to not get knocked out. Tyson, it wasn't me. 
I, even as nice as he is now, if I see Mike Tyson in retro yellow shorts, uh, <laughs> <laughs> moccasins, and a dashiki with a Bible in his hand, I still will cross the street. There's no way, bro. I've seen too many of his fights. But, uh, yeah, like, I wanted to make a point, too, is that, like, the reason why I am the way I am on myself is because at one point I experienced it from the exterior and it worked on me, right? And it worked on me against all of the ways I tried to tell myself, like, that's not what you responded to. You decided afterwards. Yeah, but I had plenty of opportunities to decide even before that too. <laughs> And I didn't. It was afterwards where I decided, right, to make those changes. And it, it made me conscious. It made me subconscious of myself. Uh, subconscious of my subconscious, honestly, like of my inner voice. I started to like actually pay attention to what I'm telling myself and why I'm how I'm talking myself out of things and how I'm and, uh, convincing myself that I, it's OK. I, I can be OK another day like I was when I was completely unhappy, completely incomplacent. It was, it was showing in my progress and everything. I like slowed down on the music, slowed down and I started dressing different. I started, I had identity crisis. I was covering my face with dreadlocks, all that. And it's just, I got good at talking myself out of things. And I didn't have I shied away from the things that I responded to make a difference with because I was content with my current situation. So when there was times where I, the pressure was applied, I would just like leave <laughs> or I would like talk my way, segue out of the conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. But one, I, re I remember being put in a situation where it was like, I had the infection, like I told you. At that time, me and you hadn't been talking for a while. We had, life took us other places for a little bit, but um. Um, I had an infection that went from my wisdom tooth and traveled down the neck past, past the jugular into my damn heart. And I got like, it got so bad that my heart couldn't even, like protect itself from it. I got what you call pericarditis. And like, there's like a little, a little uh, shield around your heart that fights off infections and stuff. And that thing got too inflammated. And it was like seeping into my heart and I passed out like a couple of times. And apparently I had two heart attacks in one week. I went to the hospital and all that. And uh, when I was in there, I really started having conversations with myself about my health, not only physical, but mental too. Because if your mental health is correct, you're not just going to let yourself like Eat, eat yourself into a great early grave or like depress sit around and depress yourself into like mental illness you're not you're not gonna do all that stuff to yourself if you're not suffering from some type of psychological traumas you know and when we're ba we're born to survive so when you're doing when you have habits that go against that then there's something wrong with you and you need to have you need to have conversation with people that care about you or a conversation, most importantly, if you can, some people suck at talking to themselves, but if you can sit there and deal with that, man, because in that hospital, I was, I got so terrified that I started to like see my kids grow up without me. Literally vivid imaginations of it. And I started to like, imagine like what people would think about me while I was here that I left and the, and it got really dark because I, w I realized, dude, I'm only saying negative things in my own head. I'm creating negative concepts about how people perceive me. That, that's weird. <laughs> and it scared me. And so after that, man, I survived that, God willing. And uh, in there, one of the ladies told me, like, I told her I skateboarded and all that. And she was like, well, you got the shattered ankle. Your finger is kind of crooked. You got bone spurs in your spinal cord. Maybe you should like uh, play golf or something because, you know, over time, this could be really bad on you. And all this stuff is going to come back to meet you later on in life. And I was like, 
leave. <laughs> Larry, security. <laughs> Heck no, nah, bro. You know what it did? It pissed me off at myself to hear her say that. I look that defeated to her that instead of her saying, it's okay when you get out of here, get your skateboard and get back to it. You know, you'll be okay. Instead of her giving me those type of advices, she motivated me to stop and do something else because I'm jacked up, bro. And I was like, I don't feel that way here. Exactly. So I need to, I need to align it. You know what I mean? I got to choose one or the other. I can't be half-assed. I'm either going to be fat and, and unhealthy and depressed and quit skateboarding so I don't go kill myself with it because I dang sure wasn't healthy enough to get it done. Or I was going to like get good, get healthy. And that way I can do the things. I started to work out and things like that. And I had a hard time staying motivated. And I watched videos. I did all this stuff, man. I took on heroes in the gym and would talk to them and introduce myself. And I'll talk. I got a membership through my job, all these things. And I kept falling off. And I'm like, why am I falling off when I want this so bad? And it's crazy. It, it threw me off because I'm like, I decided I wanted this. Is that not good enough to keep going as strong as I should be going? It's my decision, my body. I'm in control of my body, right? So if I decided that I'm going to get healthy, why is it so hard to stay motivated? Why am I not going? And that energy sparked something in me. And then I remember I found David Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> when I was introduced to that energy, I was pumped. But I wouldn't have known that unless someone went against my grain something went against my grain of what I usually respond to, right? And so how I say, sometimes for me, how I look at it is some people, they might tell you like, oh, that's not how I like to be talked to. That's not how I would get like to be trained. Well, if that was the case, well, if you knew how you like to be trained, you wouldn't be over here you talking. Be. You would be where you, if you be. If you were that, if you were that in control, that you had things that you knew what you responded to, you'd already be good at whatever you're doing. So get that out of here and come back in here with as an open book, you know what I mean? A little block of putty and say, admit it, not say it just to make someone else feel empowered. But if you're in the situation that I was in, admit it that you don't know what you're doing. And you need guidance, right? Accept that help, man, because it changes it. when you, you see a person that you never thought you could be. And then the, the motivation starts to build block on top of that. Now you have a new foundation to start building from because your previous foundation wasn't stable. I'm a broke on every occasion. Anytime somebody brought a little bit of luggage over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anytime you had a hard day of working out and you had maybe two or three days of soreness you're like god oh, did something wrong and you keep reminding yourself that you don't know how to do it and instead of going back to learn it or pushing yourself past that you just sit on it for a couple months until something else reminds you that you're an unhealthy piece of crap to yourself and then you start seeking help again it's better to just be like open to any if you don't have the answer be open to all these uh, uh, possibilities first and then then you start weighing in if I'm starting to talk myself out of it, it's I'm and I'm being transparent with that stuff. Like, help me get a grip on it because I don't want the other side of it. And so when you you could choose like Tyson's way, you know what I mean, or this, you know, it, like you got these people that Tyson needed the pressures. He needed to be. He needed that. He needed that structure in his life because he already had the crazy. The crazy was what he was good at. That's the model. You know what I mean? But for, and for, for us, like me and you, we got the crazy. We jump off of stuff for a hobby, bro. I've broken a heck of bones and I'm still, I still miss it. I have my skateboard. Sometimes I lay my skateboard next to my bed and I'm laying there and I'm looking at it and I'm picturing myself doing tricks. You know what I mean? 
and I'll wake up the next morning and we limp into the restroom and we'll go pee because I, I can feel my surgery, you know? But we have the crazy, but if we just need the structure, you know? And I think, I mean, the crazy is, um, you know, I'm not saying we're like, like on the level of my, how Mike Tyson was, you know what I mean? Like that depends on the circumstances you're in. Like you have to step to the occasion of your environment you got to respond to that energy that's being brought, brought towards you so you can survive it. You got to stay level, head above water. But we do have, like, working out is not much different than going to have an eight-hour session of skateboard. But which one do we choose? Skateboarding, which actually breaks us a lot, you know? But then you got, like, Neem Williams. That dude already had the crazy. He just needs to put the structure there, you know? And when he did, he got off the alcohol and all that stuff and the hanging out and then put the structure in. You have to be open. You have to be down to earth and open-minded. You can't just be like, this is what I respond to, or this is how I like my trainer to be because you lost the right to pick that when you let go of yourself. I did that for a long time. You know, I think motivation is not physical at all. And I think most times when people talk motivation, they talk it from the aspects of how do I do this thing physically? How do I accomplish this goal that I've set that's going to cause my body to move, going to cause me to work, lose sleep? I don't think motivation is physical. I think the body doing whatever needs to be done is physical. But I believe the hardest part about being motivated is, is mental. I think that, you know, the reason why people can't stay consistently motivated, which is the question you asked, why is motivation not consistent? Mm -hmm. It's because people don't have the willpower and willpower doesn't have anything to do with your body. It has to do with your mind. And this is why I think people like David Goggins, Tony Robbins, I think like army sergeants, the police academy, you know, I would even say like certain fraternities and sororities but why I think they work so well is because they understand that a lot of the times people get into these things thinking oh I can do the physical aspects of it you know I can run I can jump I can do the pull-ups the sit-ups but can you have this drill sergeant yelling in your ear and you not let that affect you can you have this thing that is trying to destroy you mentally you know, and still be able to perform the duties you need to perform physically. And I think that's what real motivation does. I think that's why you brought him up, David Goggins and Tony Robbins are so like well known because they are trying to get you to understand it from a place mentally. Anybody can run. Anybody can run if, if you can walk. And if not, then you can throw your arms there's something that you can do everybody can do something yeah. you know god forbid unless they're quadriplegic or you know they can't move their bodies but anybody can accomplish what that thing is that they want to accomplish but the first thing you have to beat is your mind you know, there was a time where i was doing something because my motivation was i want my daughters and i want my family to be able to look at me and say this is who my father is. I wanted them to be able to look at me in pride. I wanted them to be able to look at me and be happy. I wanted them to be able to mention me to their coworkers and to their family and to their friends. And, and you know, I wanted to create a legacy for the farmer name. You know, I wanted people to say, the farmers are this. And I wanted that to start with me. But then while I was going through the process of the thing that I was going through, you know, I ended, we ended up breaking up. You know, not my wife. I love my wife now. I love my wife. This is in my past. End up breaking up. It ended up just being me. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I was doing this for my daughters. I was doing this for my, at the time, person I was dating. I was doing this for the farmer brand. Why am I still here? Why am I allowing myself to go through this? Why am I putting myself through these things that seem unnecessary? And then I determined I'm doing it for me, you know? I'm mentally weak. I'm mentally broken. I'm not mentally strong. And I'm around a group of people who are trying to show me that they're trying to expose that to me. They're trying to show me that you can do this. You know, it's not easy. And no, you're not going to shortcut it. And no, we're not going to take our foot off the gas. You have to determine, you have to have the willpower that regardless of what I go through, I'm like, 
There are people who say, I'm, re- I'm willing to die for it. And there are people who literally mean it. The perfect example that comes to mind right now is so a story in the Bible where, oh man, uh, pastor, don't be mad at me because I don't remember the name of the uh, water, the body of water. But there's this body of water and this angel will come every couple of years and stir up this body of water. And the people will go to the water and hop in it to get healed. But there's this guy who can't walk. He's lame. His legs don't work. So all these people will go by and they would pass this man up. And you would think people would be like, yo, man, go get in the water. Or you would think he would be motivated enough to say, like, everybody who has something wrong with them gets in this water and they go jump in and, <laughs> and they're healed. Mm-hmm. I'm getting to that water. If I got to make one arm after another, if it takes me to the next time the angel comes, if I have to hold on to somebody's leg and have them drag me, if I got to roll myself to the water, but he allowed his, his disability, he allowed the fact that he couldn't walk to stop him from being able to get to that body of water, right? Mm-hmm. So then Jesus comes up and Jesus just asks him a question like, you know, he's Jesus watching everybody get in the water and get healed and all of this other stuff. And Jesus standing there and he's looking at the man and he's like, do you want to be made whole? And the man is just like, nobody comes and picks me up and puts me in the water. All the people walk past me. All of the people, they all just go and they get their blessing and they see me sitting here and nobody helps me. And Jesus is looking at him like, do you want to be made whole? Well, you see me right here. You see my <laughs> legs don't work. You see that they just going to get in the water and Jesus is just looking at him like, okay, but do you want to be made whole? And then eventually the guy's like, of course I want to be whole. And he starts moving a little bit and Jesus is like, man, get up, take your bed and, and walk. And Jesus heals the man. And I believe Jesus did not heal him simply because, oh, he's crawling to the water. I believe what Jesus was telling him too was hey man your mindset is off it's like you Mm -hmm. watching everybody else go get theirs and waiting for somebody to do something for you when your legs ain't working because your mind also not working like you have to have the mindset of like i'm gonna get it regardless however i have to i mean i watch videos and you you see them where there's people with no hands and they play the guitar beautifully Better I than me. And those I'm videos trip me out, bro. With eight fingers, two thumbs, and I give up on the song because I can't get the lead down. But this person is playing the guitar with their toes. <laughs> or, you know, there's these guys who work out and they have no lower body, but they're in the gym. They working out. They getting it done. You have Stevie Wonder who, who can't see, but did he allow that to stop him? from making the world's most beautiful music. You know, they say, who is it, Mozart or one of those people who were deaf and he composed great music because he can feel the vibrations. It's like, what is your motivation? The motivation is not limited by you physically, by what you can do physically. It's limited by how your mind thinks. You know, we have to change our perspectives. Hey bro, what day is it? Oh, it's Wednesday. What? It's Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. With, with Will? With Will. <laughs> what happened, dude? We had this whole podcast. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how we're supposed to say it. You just said it's Wednesday. Oh, I'm going to say it's Wednesday. No, you just go, it's Wednesdays with Will and Terry. I'm going to be like, it's Wednesdays with Will and Terry? I'm like, yes, yeah, Wednesdays with Will and Terry. You just said it like that.